All right. So hello. So I'll be talking about uh, Bindat. Uh, the title here is just uh, it's just silly. It's just for some reason, back when I first heard about this, uh, this package, Bindat on that is just what came through my mind. So there's no nothing deep there. So so what is uh, Bindat? So that's you know, that, that's a package for for Emacs that's designed for basically marshalling and marshalling data structures into a, a binary format. The purpose is not to have a, an, a, an Emacs list uh, data structure and have some way to just dump it and reread it because you already have that, but rather to be able to read uh, and write uh, formats which are defined externally. So we have to, to, to read those, uh, those binary formats. So I'm just going to basically present a bit what has been that and the kind of problems that we encountered, that I encountered with them, let's say, and uh, and then talk about what I what I did with it, which is basically to re-implement it with a slightly new design. So um, you, you'll be hearing a bit about Git Kitten, but you can just ignore this. So what is bin data anyway? So I hear here, I, I just dumped the, the, the official description that, that came, it, maybe it's still there actually, that came with the package in the, in the source code. So basically it's a, it's a, a alias package to do packing and unpacking of binary data structures. And so it basically expects some kind of uh, C style representation of of structures of, of you know, data layout, and and then it lets you pack and unpack this into Lisp convenient Lisp data structures, uh, mostly basically what is called association lists. Uh, I, I'm sure not all of those all of you are familiar with Lisp, sadly. So, I, so but you're going to have to 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 see you know a fair bit of parentheses anyway. So well, you'll have to adjust somehow. Um, so the the input data structure is, is contained in what we call a, a unibyte string, so basically a vector of bytes, as opposed to, to multibyte strings, which are you know, vectors of characters. And, and it turns this into basically a, a list of sublists of other sublists that you know, where you can have field names and you know, associated with values and things like this. So, so it, it really destructures it into something very convenient to use for the list at least. So here you see a, a, an example of what it uh, might look like. Uh, so typically you'd have some kind of spec somewhere you know, in some documentation file, which might provide something like C style struct. And so here you have an example of some struct data that contains you know, a char for an opcode, then some number of, of bytes for to some identification, maybe a length, and then some actual payloads where here you know you presume that the length is actually specified uh, is actually the, the length of this this payload is actually the one that's specified here. Usually this is specified you know outside you know in as text. But of course in our case we're going to have to specify it uh, completely if we want the code to be actually able to use it. So here on the right you see the old way that this was specified with Bindat, and the new way is very similar, so it's, it's still very useful to look at it. So it basically, you, you define a spec as just a piece of chunk, chunk of data. So this set Q here basically defines a variable. Uh, actually, it modifies a variable. It is, it's an assignment. And so it says, you know, this variable data Bindat spec, uh, is, is the specification for my structured data. So I just chose this name arbitrarily. And then this quote here says, you know, what follows is just uh, a, a predefined piece of data, of ELISP data. So you don't have to construct it, it's constructed right away. But it's just a, a, an immediate uh, piece of data. And, and this piece of data basically has you know, a field name, the type associated with it, then another field name, the other type associated with it, etc. And as you can see in the types here, I have U8, which is the type for you know unsigned integers of eight bits. For ID, I have a zero terminated string of seven bytes. 
So that's the STRZ for zero. Then I have a length, which is a 32-bit integer in, uh, in, in uh, oh, I can never remember which is which. I think it'll, it'll say later, but I think it, this is uh, in uh, little Indian. And then data, which is specified to be a vector. And here you can see that I actually specify the length. So the length of the vector is the content of this field, which, uh, which is why here it says length. And by default, those vectors are presumed to contain uh, bytes. And actually, you can see one, one of the difference, other than the fact that here we specify the length, the, the, spec, the bin that spec actually also specifies all the, the padding explicitly. So here I have an explicit padding that says that you know, I need to align the end of the, the structure with a multiple of four. So it will add the, this, uh, this alignment as necessary. And then after having defined this spec, then I can simply read or write the uh, binary structures that, that obey this specification with the functions bin that pack, length, and unpack. So pack basically takes a spec and a structure, so these, that means you know, an ELISP data structure that will contain, that will say, oh, upcode is you know, seven and ID is something else, and then length is something else, data is something else. This is you know, a LISP data structure in a convenient form, and you pass it to pack and it will turn you a string of binary data. And then bin length can be used to actually predict the length of this uh, of, of the output of pack. This is actually used also internally within pack to basically construct the compute the length of the string necessary before allocating it. And then you have unpack, which is doing the opposite. And you give it a spec and what I call here raw, which is basically a, a string of bytes, and it will return the data structure. Okay, I think uh, do I have an example here. Oh yes, here I have an example use. So here I have uh, the the specification is 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 uh, basically an extension of what we had before, and but here we have the actual string of bytes represented here as a as a vector of of, of bytes in the, in the Lisp syntax. So those question marks here are actually the kind of way to to spec to quote a character. So you know, instead of having quote character quotes as in C. We have question mark and the, ca the character. That's the syntax used in, in Emacs Lisp. So here you just see you know, a stream of bytes or a sequence or a vector of bytes. And if we pass this to bin that unpack, it will return us this data structure, you know, assuming we provided the, the corresponding uh, specification. So it will say, oh, this is a data structure that has this uh, header with uh, some IP address at the beginning, and then uh, or two IP addresses, and then there's a destination port, a source port, and then it has two items because they, they, for some reason the, the, the format that was used for this here actually had a, a potentially variable number of, of items, so basically a, a vector. And the vector contains not just bytes in this case, but structures which are basically the data that I showed on the, on the slide before. And so the, the item vector here. You know, so here you have the number of items and here you actually have the item vector. The naming of using item and items it was kind of odd, but I, I just copied it from elsewhere, sorry. And here you see the various data. I, I use a somewhat incorrect Lisp uh, syntax here in order to make it fit on the on the slide, but basically you, you see there are two data, two items, and each one of those items is a is an association list, so you can think of it as, as a map, right? So here you have a map for the top level uh, struct, which has header, items, and item. And then within item, I have basically a vector where each of the vector is itself you know, uh, a map from, from, uh, from uh, field names to values. And same thing here, I have another struct with the field name and the values. So this is all fairly straightforward and it works reasonably well. Now, uh, even though it works reasonably well, it's actually, uh, it has not been used very much. Uh, 
Uh, he was introduced in Emacs 20, if I remember correctly, by uh, Kim Storm. And uh, it, it's surprisingly little used uh, to some extent. Uh, maybe it's not so surprising because Emacs usually doesn't deal very much with binary data structures, but nevertheless, it's not very heavily used. Uh, still, it is used, and I discovered this because I, I basically do, did some maintenance on the, on the code to update it to a, a new ELISP uh, dialect, which we call, which we say is using lexical scoping. We call it Emacs Lisp anyway, but... And this uh, conversion to lexical scoping actually was quite um, straightforward. There was nothing really uh, strange going on, it seemed. Uh, except that a few few weeks later, or maybe a month even, but uh, we got a, a bug report. And the bug report had basically was about this piece of code. I mean, not directly, but by you know, digging into it, it came to this piece of code. So this piece of code specifies some uh, some data structure layout for WeChat messages. So we have the length, the compression an identification, which is itself some, uh, some struct. So this is you know, referring to some other struct, uh, some other specification for some other uh, piece of the, of, of the data. And then uh, the data is a vector. Uh, and the length of this vector is actually not just this length here, right? But it's something a bit more complex. It's computed using this length, but using a few other things as well. So basically, there's you know, there's some extra uh, work that needs to be done. So it's computed this way here. We specify that to to get the length, we actually have to run some piece of Emacs Lisp code. That's what this eval says. And here is the the piece of Emacs Lisp code that returns the length. So it basically the subtraction of the length field from the struct variable, and from to that you know we discuss we. We subtract four and one, and uh, and and the length of some other field extracted from ID. So we get the, from ID we get a string, a field val, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So this seems reasonably straightforward, and it should actually work. It's a bit verbose; it's not you know ideal, but it used to work, and it's it's quite acceptable it's as such as a syntax. But the the main problem here is this struct variable. So here, this re refers to a struct variable, which d isn't defined anywhere. That's why that's why it, it crashed. And it used to work because it it used to be that you know the the the, the old implementation of bin dat used used dynamic scoping, and there we actually had a, a local variable called struct, which happened to be available via dynamic scoping here. But once we converted to lexical scoping, this was not the case anymore. So just uh, to go back, what ha what basically happened at that point is I tried to to look at how to fix this problem. Should we, you know, export the struct variable, or or is there some other way to solve, to fix the problem? And so I I kind of looked at the definition of the of the syntax. So here's the the, the official definition of the the old DL cell syntax. So it basically says uh, a spec is uh, basically a list of items, and each one of those items is the, a field name with a type, basically, with a few exceptions. It can also be a field name with some form, which supposedly returns a type, even though it's quite unclear exactly how this works. Or it can be a field name with some filler, and just says, you know, there's some number of bytes there, but they're not used. Or some filler, like the one we've already seen, which is a line. So basically, the number of bytes depends exactly on where we are within the data structure so that the result is aligned to a multiple of len. Or it can be, you know, it can contain at this point some other structure. So this is basically a reference to another structure. Or it can be a union, which basically, you know, it's kind of a case, you know, depending on some value of the, on this arg, it will contain different possible types of this place. Or it can be a repeat, which, which, which is basically a, a vector. But it's actually slightly different. And then, uh, so here, and then what is the type? Well, a type can be a, a, a an unsigned integer or a signed integer. And it can be in network order or in little endian. 
and you can do a string or you could be a vector. And here we see there's something strange going on first. We have this notion of repeat here, or, or we can have a vec. And repeat and vac are two alternatives for basically the same thing. They're not in the same syntactic category. And so there's a, a, an odd distinction between the two, which is not really uh, clear why, we, why it's necessary. Then you have you know, a field name. The field name itself can be an expression. Even though this is uh, you know, definitely not clear how this works in general. I mean, the, the code is there, but uh, I, I couldn't make it work in, in all cases. I don't know how it could work in general. Um, then we have you know, a specification of how the length can be specified. Uh, and the length is usually specified as an arg. The arg can be either some expression that computes something, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, if you're kind of lost at this point, it's normal. I, I I was kind of lost too. It's 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 fairly complex for for what I think it's actually doing. So basically, I at this point I saw uh, first uh, a big problem, which is that this variable struct is not documented anywhere, and so the old code was relying on an und undocumented feature of the code. Uh, I mean, the old WeChat WeChat code, the one that I needed to to fix, you know, where I had to fix the bug. Uh, so I had to adjust something somewhere, either by changing the documentation or providing some, some other way to do the same. But there was actually currently no way to do the same. So it, the old WeChat code was using an undocumented feature, but in a, it, it was indispensable. Without it, it would not be able to use BNAT. Uh, so another problem I saw was that the spec imposes the use of eval. It's not because it has eval keywords uh, at various places, but rather because if you look at how this is defined uh, here, for example, you see here we have a, a chunk of Vmax Lisp, but it's stored within, you know, under a quote, which means basically this is at this point when we when we when Emacs Lisp sees this chunk of code, all it says. All it sees is basically a list of lists of lists that contain symbols. It doesn't know that this is supposed to be some chunk of code. It's just a, a list that contains a minus symbol and that contains another su sub list with a bin that get field symbol and those kinds of things. It has no idea that this is code, uh, which basically, basically means that in order to run it, then you have to pass it either to compile it first and then run it or, or interpret it right away or something like this. And that's that makes uh, that makes uh, that makes me pretty sad. You know, I, I don't like this kind of thing. I call this the kitten hell. Also, it has you know downsides that it doesn't give you any 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 useful feedback because the the compiler, the Emacs Lisp compiler, can't know that this is a chunk of code, so it can't look at it and give you uh, feedback about you know, unknown variables, for example, such as struct. So you only get errors at runtime. You don't get any feedback before that. The other thing I, that I saw was that the grammar was quite complex, et cetera. So I, I basically went and tried to, to rework it. The other thing is that you can't, you know, you can't debug it because it's, it's data. So it, it can't be you know, instrumented to be debugged. To be debugged. So I basically uh, looked at other, ex other uses to see how we could kind of rework this, uh, this code. Other things I saw that were problematic was that, uh, first, it was not used very much, but the few places where it was used, it was not very convenient to use. So for example, in, uh, in WeChat, there's another place where we use, where they use bindat, and they use it like this. So they have, you have here a call to bindat unpack, where they specify the, the type as, a trivial struct with a single single field called len that contains a 32-bit integer. And so they basically unpack this struct that contains only a single uh, integer. In return, they, they receive a list of, uh, of pairs, so basically you know, a, a, a table that has a single field len which contains the actual integer. So it's, it's kind of awkward to have to to specify a, a dummy field and then to actually el eliminate this field, all you wanted was to basically pack and unpack an integer, right? 
So there's some some you know useless you know the get, this get field here should not be necessary. I should just be able to say bin data unpack u32 and be done with it. And and it gets worse in a few other places. For example, in uh, in in another package called WebSocket, which uh, implements what you you could expect. Uh, basically, you have here this chunk of code which says, "Hmm, I need to unpack an integer." So it's you know very much a, a similar problem as before, and and instead of being just being able to directly say, you know, "I want an integer type," you have to of course construct a, a struct type. But on top of that, you know the the length of this integer will depend on 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 external code, and so you receive an end uh, argument which basically specify the, the size in bytes, and they have to turn this into the corresponding type. So you know, if it's one, then it, then it turns it to an eight, et cetera. But that, that means you, know, you, you construct the type at runtime. So here you really have to, to use eval. You can't, you, can't, you, know, you can't do anything beforehand. You know, it's, uh, it makes it difficult to get good debugging and, and good uh, compiler warnings. And all of this is just to pack and unpack integers, which is one of the main uses, apparently, of uh, of, uh, of being that. And and one of the, the problems here is that if you specify this as a type, you know, we can't compute the length. You know, the the length of a of an integer is specified directly in the type. There's no you know eval available in at this place. So the new design uh, is uh, is basically you know is extremely similar to the, the preceding one, but tries to make it simpler and slightly more flexible by basically having everything be code you know, as much as possible. So you see that, for example, in in the, with the new syntax, we don't have a quote here. Instead, we use the bin that type macro. So this is a macro that takes the rest of the spec as an argument. The fact that it's a macro means that it can actually expand this into code. And it's actually indeed going to do that. It's going to take the, this specification and turn it immediately into an actual function that does, actually it turns it into three functions that do respectively the, the pack, the, the unpack and the computation of the length. And so we can right away actually generate code, which, was of course, which is of course going to be a bit more efficient and also lets you, you know, give useful error messages also allows uh, uh, debugging by instrumenting the code if necessary and those kinds of things. Other difference that you see here is that not only this thing here is code, you know, since it's, it's a call to a macro, but also in the pipe where we specify the length, I don't need to say, oh, here I have to eval something because by default, the length that you specify is itself assumed to be code. This eight here is also could be any expression that computes the length uh, in, in bits. Right? It doesn't have to be a, an immediate constant. Same thing here for this 32. So wherever possible, I just let the, the, the code be code. And actually it, it goes further. The type itself can also be computed. And so here, I, what, what is associated with length is actually in this case, a, a use of a piece of code that says you int 32. It really is a piece of code. I could instead of have you know, if something you int 32, else something else. And that works, that works as well. And the new grammar is much simpler. Uh, I just say uh, there's a, a type and, and that's all there is fundamentally. So a type is an, an int or, or an unsigned int and could be you know, in, uh, in little Indian or a big Indian, it can be as a string or a vector, or it can be, this is a, a reference to another type. You know, so you can have just like a, as before, you know, a struct can contain another struct and those kinds of things. Uh, but it, it can also just immediately specify the substruct and this, because that's what a, a, a type can be. A, a, a type can be a struct Instead of always having to have a struct in which you have to put, put fields, you can have just the type, and one of the types can be a struct. And then you have a list of fields, which is just an association list of labels to types. 
So the grammar is much simpler than before, but it's more flexible because most of those things are just uh, chunks of code. So type is actually a normal piece of code. X is also a, a, an Emacs Lisp expression. Uh, this type here is an Emacs Lisp expression. Len is an Emacs Lisp expression. So you can compute any part you want. You basically have types which which are regular expression. And so, so uh, not in the set of regex, sorry. And so you can, you, know, you basically have dependent types in a sense. So the advantages, of course, is that there's support for debugging. Uh, there's no special cases for a, a distinct, distinction between types and specs and uh, or other things. Uh, the union type has disappeared because now we can use if or cons or, or any other computation we, we want to compute the type. Uh, so it's, it's, uh, it's unnecessary. We can use standard Emacs list construct for that. We don't need to use single single field structs. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Hello. Uh, I, I'm. I'm doing a video in our presentation. Ciao. Mm -hmm. Sorry about that. Uh, so, uh, right. So you don't, you can have you know Bindak can now take a type instead of. A list of fields, so you can have, you know, if we need to pack or unpack an integer, it's very easy. And and since since it's exposed as code, you know, you can have things like FlyMake, you know, which are basically, you know, give you show you the, your errors directly in the source code. And and as I said, you can have a, a vector. Okay, now you are okay. recording again. Thanks. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, I can't click on the buttons anymore. Yeah, and that's then... that's because I have to make you presenter again. Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay, done. All right, thank you. Okay, so uh, so as I said, you know, here you can have a vector of elements which are either. You know, uh, in little Indian or in big engine, depending on some computation of uh, some function in or interface. Okay. So this is the kind of things that you can now do. You know, this is, of course, in, for, for an imaginary situation. So among the, the new features, you know, these are, you know, these are basically what I did before was basically re reshuffle a bit what was already there but I wanted to add a few new features uh, to make to make the system more useful so the main one is that you can now control control the Lisp side representation of data so before the the, the, the library would always represent your structs once unpacked they would represent them as basically lists of pairs so, so association lists or, or what you can consider as, as maps uh, they don't actually hash tables you know, in, in terms of implementation, but uh, it doesn't really matter in this case. But we want actually to be able to choose whether they are represented as hash tables or some other uh, some other data structure, or or even something completely different. And for that, I added those three keywords you can use within the spec to specify how to unpack and and how to repack. So, for example, there's the unpack val. Uh, Keyword which lets you give you an expression that says, you know, once I've 
extracted the various fields, how do I construct the resulting object? So this form exp here can actually refer to the various fields as, uh, as using, using variables. And it will just be the expression that computes the new object. And, and same thing for pack val, which is basically when we go the other way around, when we, when we pack uh, uh, a data structure into its binary form, then this pack val, which can specify how to extract the particular, a particular value of a, of a field from the, the list data structure uh, in order to, to put it into, into the binary, right? So, so your, your, your list data structure now is not always a map. It can be anything you want. And so how to extract the field called, called length, for example, well, it, it depends on what the data structure looks like, right? And so this expression will say, here is how I extract the length of, uh, of, this, uh, of this field. And in order to be able to, to do that, you need to be able to refer to, to the, the data structure whose fields you need to extract. And that's what this uh, pack var is for. So I, I'm going to show an, an actual example because without it, it doesn't make much sense. Here I define a spec for, for OSC time tags. So OSC is some, uh, some sound uh, format used for, for some th synthesizers. Uh, you know, to, se to send commands and, and control uh, uh, those kinds of objects, those kinds of devices. And this is just the, the specification for the time tag. So the time tag in, in OSC is defined to be, I think, the number of, uh, of seconds uh, uh, since, uh, since the, 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 the NTP offset, basically, the same the same starting point as, as using it in NTP. And I decided that a good representation for that in, in MX Lisp is to represent those, those timestamps as, as Emacs Lisp time entities, which use a, a representation, which is basically a pair constructed with these cons here of a number of ticks and, and, a, and a, a base frequency. So basically how many ticks represent one second. So in this unpack val here, I specify how I, when, when I want to unpack a, a, a data structure, how do I actually construct the representation? And so, as I said, I want to represent my time as Emacs Lisp native time representation. So that's what I do here. I do cons of the number of ticks, which I need to, to adjust to the number of, uh, of ticks at the NTP offset. And, and I specify the, the frequency that is, uh, that is used, the number of ticks per second, which in this case is, is one to the power 32. And, and then when I need to pack this data structure, so basically I receive an Emacs Lisp timestamp and I need to turn it into the OSC representation, which is an integer number of ticks. Then I can use this pack val, which can refer to the actual uh, object that I'm trying to, to, to represent with the variable time. And so I can take this time, pass it to convert, which will, uh, because, because uh, this representation I use here for time values is not the only one. So time convert will convert it no matter which time representation is used for, for, for time. And then I extract the car, which is the number of ticks and, and then you know, add the, the, base, uh, the base offset. And so with this specification here, I can then pack and unpack directly from you know, the binary representation of timestamp to Emacs list natural representation of time. Here's a, a, a more interesting example where I, I make use of the fact that the types can be compute, computed. And so I define the, the, the way, basically the, the bin dat spe specification for the LEB128 so that's a little Indian binary or something like this. Um, so this is a, a way to represent you know, arbitrary size integers, basically as, you know, as a sequence of 128, uh, of, of seven bit uh, integers, whether the extra bit indicates whether there is, there is another one or whether this is the last one. And so I say, well, since this is a, a data structure of size that is not 
you know, statically known. It's not it can't be represented quite in the same way. I define it recursively. I say that you know an LEB one twenty eight is is basically a recursive uh, structure which starts with a byte that that can be either basically the last byte or it can be uh, the first byte which is not going to be the last byte and then it's going to be followed by another LEB128. And that's exactly what I do here. So this loop is basically the, the definition of my LEB128. That's actually what, how I should have called it now that I think about it. And this let rec here just is basically an Emacs list construct. It says you know, I'm defining uh, 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 data recursively. So the loop, this uh, variable I'm defining it, is defined recursively, so I can refer to it recursively, which I do right here. So I say, well, my this data I'm 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 constructing is a struct, uh, which I I'm going to be able to, I want to be able to refer to under the name n when I when I pack it. And what is it uh, made of? It's made of a head, which is an eight-bit integer. And this 8-bit integer is, is going to be uh, uh, obtained by extracting you know, the, last, uh, the last seven bits of, uh, of the integer I'm trying to represent. And so if, it's, if this last, those, uh, those last seven bits are actually all there is, then that's what I'm going to use. And if not, that means if there's something else, which I test here, if n is, is actually bigger than 128, then I added the eighth bit, which says, well, there's, there's more to come. And so the tail is the rest of the, stru of the structure, which is itself basically an LEB128. So that's exactly what I'm going to say here. I'm going to say, well, if, if the head was smaller than 128, that means the head was the last byte, then the tail is empty, which is this type unit here. And I say unit zero because this rest represents the value zero. And then if it's not, then it actually, the rest contains an LEB128, which is my loop, what I'm, what I'm being, what I'm defining right now. And I can extract, you know, from N, I can extract the value of this tail by just you know, dividing it by 128, which I do here as a, as a shift. And then when I unpack, then I just, you know, extract the, the value of the rest which is the LEB on, on the rest, I multiply it one by 128 and I add the value. And so together this lets me now using bin.pack and bin.unpack, let me take uh, an arbitrary size integer, elisp integer, and turn it into the LEB128 representation. And I'm sure for someone who's not familiar with the index list, this looks a bit uh, cryptic. But it's actually a you know a fairly natural way to represent it in, as as a as a re recursive data structure. So uh, in conclusion, I've I've designed this uh, this new language, uh, which is basically the same as as the old bin pack bin dash, but uh, slightly uh, maybe more tightly defined. Uh, it's significantly faster as well. There was not the main uh, the main point, but there was you know a nice side effect. I think I've I've been known to say that it was four times faster, but that was that was wrong. I think that I, I recently saw some measurements. It's like two or something, a bit more than two, twice as fast. So there's there's a, a, a lot more uh, speed that could be could be extracted if necessary. But so far the it's still not used very much anyway. So. Yeah. The, the, the pressure is not ex ex extremely high. There's also some uh, some other extension. I added some way to define new types with uh, bin dot def micro, and, uh, and I'm not necessarily completely con con happy with this uh, the current way this uh, this works. Another problem is that there's currently no uh, control at the bit level, so I can't have the other structures which are aligned. On something else in the multiple of eight bit of, of eight bit basically uh, on bytes, and so I guess I, we could somehow, but it, it, the rest of the structure, the infrastructure, it doesn't really work very well with this. And of course, I'm uh, as you can see, this is a language that you know, it's a domain-specific language that is fairly similar to to Poke in 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 its uh, in its goals, uh, 
and it, it does have some similarities, but it's not uh, as uh, as flexible and, and powerful. So there is a, a kind of desire to to get closer and maybe you know, use Pog directly or something like this. So this is it. Thank you. If you have questions. Well, I just want to say that if you make bin that to use poke, we will have a problem because right now I am integrating Emacs with poke using the poke daemon, and I am using bin that to decode the messages from the poke daemon. So, <laughs> ah, great, uh, great. So, a use of bin that, I'm really happy to hear that. Yeah, yeah, and it's nice because I'm getting, I'm using a process filter in Emacs, and of course, I'm getting in the filter a string. And uh, yeah, I need to extract some bytes from it. And yeah, for that is is perfect. So okay. thanks for that. <laughs> so don't make it use poke because then we will have a real problem here. Well, you can use an old poke to to run the new thing. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> Any other comment or question? Okay, so uh, thank you very much again. And uh, okay, let me st stop the recording. <clears throat> uh, I can start. Tell me. Yes, please go ahead. Hello, everybody, and uh, thank you for joining us. I have 90 minutes, right, Jose? I don't know if I will use them all. You can use up to even two hours because the next ah, talk no. is in, at eight. So up to you. Don't worry, don't worry. I will, I, I will not punish you like that. You don't deserve it. So, uh, 